Hi everybody and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be talking about my desk mini which is from ASRock and this one specifically is the ASRock Desk Mini X300. So as you can see in the box that's it but it's empty now because I'm already using but this video is in regards to what I install on my desk mini as a storage and also what I use for my system. At the moment, I'm running two different systems in two different NVMe M.2. The one that I use for testing and all that is the Fedora, which I'm using on my NVMe M.2, which is from Transcend. The speed itself is not really that impressive, but it does the job really well. And for the price that cost me, it's brilliant. The other SSD that I have, which I don't have a box here, is from Crucial BX500, which is mainly to be used to storage videos or any type of graphics that I do. So that is just for that specifically and nothing else. For my backup to storage in general, all the two systems that I have, I have this one here, which is from Samsung and is the Samsung 860 EVO. The reason I went for this one in regards to the others is because of the warranty. It has a five years warranty and the speed itself is quite impressive and I have no complaints in regards to that. So although Samsung can be very expensive, but when it comes to quality, they can be slightly better compared to the competitors. Next is my main NVMe M.2, which is this one here the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. The reason I went for this one is because of the speed of writing and reading. And at the time that I purchased, it was the best one that was available. And with the warranty also of five years. So this one, so far, I don't have no complaints. I installed my main system, which is from Solos OS, and I don't have no complaints, nothing at all whatsoever. Now, for the RAM, I went with the Crucial, more specifically, the gaming RAM. It is a gaming RAM, and the reason why I didn't went for a standard RAM is because with this one, the frequency is already quite high, is at 3200 MHz. Also, I can overclock to a much higher frequency, which is brilliant, it's what I was looking for. The latency also is quite low compared to the other competitors, which is 17, 18, some of them is 22, which I don't want those. I want something, if I could, I would get a 14, but I couldn't get it. So I went for the best thing, which was this one. The latest is, is a 16. And yeah, so far, no complaints whatsoever. It's impressive. It's a 3200 megahertz. At the moment, it's running on my mini PC at 3600 megahertz. And it's stable. No, no issues whatsoever. I've been using for now more than a week and it's perfect. So that's why I went for this one specifically due to the overclock of the frequency is quite high and I can use in almost any other PC. Okay, next we're gonna go for the, the previous APU that I installed and the first one I installed on my ASRock. This one is, let's see if you guys can see it. 
So this is an AMD Ryzen 3 Pro 4350G. At the time I purchased this one, it was, well, it was the best time to buy, which was, it cost me 158 pounds. Um, but then after that, it went to 200 pounds straight away. So I wanted to buy another one, but then I said to myself, nah, it's not, it's pointless. I might as well wait. So I purchased this one. If you can purchase, because you cannot afford a much better APU, I would advise you, yes, do it, because it is worth it. In regards to gaming, I don't do gaming, so I cannot really say to you guys, oh, it's good for gaming, it's not. And there are many videos about this on YouTube, so you guys can check yourself um, in regards to the gaming and performance. But in regards to video rendering and any type of graphic work that you, you could do at work, but you are home and you want to do it, perfect. It's very good and it does the job really fantastic. So yeah, that was my previous one, which I swap with the IMD Ryzen 5 5600G. That is my main APU right now on my desk mini. And the reason, well, some of you may say, oh, I went with the 57G. Well, I didn't want to go with the 57G because, first of all, it has more cores, which, in, in other words, it can be much harder. And as you guys know, people who have the ASRock Desk Mini X300, uh, although it's a really a good box, a perfect motherboard. Sometimes if the APU heats up too much, yeah, it can become an issue. So an eight cores, 16 threads, I really don't need that. I need something that can do the normal kind of job that you can do from the office or at home or whatever. And you can still play some games if you want to, you can do video rendering, you can do any type of photography, which you may need to use the graphics. It's perfect. It's perfect. And for the price, it's also really nice. At the moment, it may go higher, but that to me, six cores six, uh, and 12 threads, is perfect and this one for me is just what I need so for those who go who well who want the 5700 G or already purchased I don't know about the heat basic uh, in regards to when you're doing like heavy load stuff but with this one it's quite impressive that this one can heat up much more than this one. So just for guys, just for you guys to have an idea, this one I can go, if I'm doing a video rendering of the same size, it would go between 58 to 70 most. With this one here, the same video, it doesn't reach 41 degrees Celsius. So that is a big difference. And the first time I try, I said, now there must be something wrong. So I tried several times just to make sure that the temperature it was exactly that. And yes, it never reached over 42 degrees Celsius. So to me, that is perfect. Yeah, I think I said all or not. Okay, did I mention about the, the cooling? No, I probably didn't. The cooling or the heatsink I'm using is from Noctua NH-L9A IM4. This is the classic style, but I also have another Noctua, an L9I, which is for Intel. And bear in mind, the, 
the L9i, not A, does not fit on this one. So if you are new and you cannot find the L9A in, uh, in Chrome and you want to get the L9i to put on that, please don't because it's not going to fit and if you try to force it, you're going to damage the motherboard. So beware with that. What you can do if you have a, a, a 9i is to swap the fan, which I did. So at the moment, I have two fans, so I can use this one, okay, the original one, or the black one, which I have right now installed. Um, yeah, and so yeah, that's it for what I have installed on my system. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will try to do one with the BIOS, but because, as you can see, I'm recording with the phone and the quality is not really the best. So I may, I may be going to do, I'm going to try to do is to take pictures from within the BIOS step by step and then do sort of kind of a, a, a screen show um, of parts of pictures of the BIOS and what I did. But until then, you guys take care and have a good time. Bye.